الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد حدثني جماعة من الشيوخ بإسناد كل إلى سفيان بن عيينة عن عمرو بن دينار عن أبي قابوس مولى عبد الله بن عمر عن عبد الله بن عمر بن عاص رضي الله تعالى عنهما أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الراحمون يرحمهم الرحمن يرحموا من في الأرض يرحمكم من في السماء on the authority of Abdullah bin Amr bin Aus radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma he said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that those who show mercy they will be shown mercy by the most merciful we have mercy and show mercy to those who are in the earth and the one who is above the heavens will show you mercy وقال العلماء ذلك بأن العلم رحمة the ulama they mentioned this is because knowledge is mercy نتيجته رحمة في الدنيا it's the result of knowledge is mercy in this world and وَغَيَتُهُ رَحْمَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ And the result of knowledge and the ultimate goal of knowledge is mercy in the hereafter. Because this hadith is a hadith that is مُسَلْسَلْ بِالْأَوَّلِيَّةِ is a hadith that many of the scholars of, of hadith, many of the imams of hadith, when they got a new pupil, they will begin by teaching them this narration due to the aforementioned reasons. We continue going over the tremendous, the tremendous book by the Fadilat al-Shaykh, Imam Imam al-Nawawi, Rahimahullahu Ta'ala, Al-Arba'oon al-Nawawiyya. We have reached the 10th hadith, hadith al-Ashir, عن Abi Huraira, radiyallahu ta'ala, عن قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said that the Messenger of Allah, صلى الله عليه وسلم he said إن الله تعالى طيب لا يقبل إلا طيبا that Allah is good and he only accepts that which is good وإن الله أمر المؤمنين بما أمر به المرسلين and that Allah has commanded the believers with the same command that he commanded the prophets with, the messengers with. فقال, so, so thus Allah Ta'ala, he said, يَا أَيُّهَا الرُّسُلُ O messengers, كُلُوا مِنْ طيبات, Eat from that which is good. وَعَمَلُوا صَالِحًا And do righteous good deeds. Perform righteous good deeds. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى And Allah Ta'ala, he says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O you who believe, كُلُوا مِنْ طَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ And eat from the good that we have provided for you. ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ الرَّجُلُ يُطِيلُ السَّفَرُ And then the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned a man who was on a very long journey. أَشْعَثَ أَغْبَرُ He became disheveled and dusty. He became disheveled and dusty. Ash'atha aghbara. Yamuddu yadayhi ila samaa. 
and he raised his hands to the sky saying ya rab ya rab oh my lord oh my lord wa mat'amuhu haram but his food was haram wa mashrabuhu haram and his drink was haram wa malbasahu haram and his clothes they were haram wa ghudiya bil haram and he was clad in that which was haram the prophet sallallahu he said he ended this hadith by saying fa anna yustajabu lahu so how could he be answered how could his dua be answered hadith sahih rawahu muslim the fadil to shaykh the muhaddith muhaddith al madina the muhaddith of medina al shaykh abdul muhsin al badr al abad al abad al badr hadith allah ta'ala he mentions he says wa qawluhu in his statement inna allah ta'ala tayyibun la yaqbalu illa tayyiba that the statement of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that verily allah is good and he only accepts that which is good yadullu ala anna man yadullu ala anna min asma'i illah it points us to the fact that from the names of allah is at tayyib is at tayyib na'am wa yaqbalu min al-a'mal ma kana mawsufan bit tayyib and that allah ta'ala he accepts from actions that which is categorized and described as good meaning those righteous good deeds that are performed in the manner in which they should be performed in a manner in which makes them el- el- eligible to be accepted naam as we know in order for an action to be accepted then it has to be upon tawhid and it has to be in accordance to the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam naam aswabu yani akhlasu wa aswabu akhlasu idha kana lillah wa aswabu idha kana ala sunnah rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam akhlasu the most yani sincere if it is sincerely for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon tawhid wa aswabu the most correct meaning if it is upon the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and if any action is the void of one of these two conditions then that action will not be accepted and that yani for that person it's not good why because either they performed it upon shirk or they performed an act of bid'ah and nothing that is upon shirk is considered good and nothing that is upon bid'ah is considered good because there is no such thing as al bid'a al hasana there is no such thing as a good bid'a but it is as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that wa sharru al umuri muhdathatuha wa kull muhdathatin bid'a wa kull bid'atin dalala wa kull dalalatin fi an-nar that every that the worst of all affairs are newly invented matters and every newly invented matter in the deen is a going astray and every going astray is in the fire every bid'ah is a going astray and every going astray is in the fire so therefore in order for an action to be accepted then it has to be that which is good and that which is good is that which is upon tawhid and that which is upon sunnah na'am wa huwa 'amun fi jami' al-a'mal the shaykh says and this is general for every action this encompasses and includes every single action every single deed wa minha and from the deeds in which it enters into in which we have to be very yani uh, uh, careful as relates to it is what al kasb as relates to our earnings naam because this is the main focus of this particular hadith this related to one's earnings one's earnings naam fala ya'mal al mar illa Saliha. So a person should not do anything except that is good. Walla yaktasibu illa tayyiba, and they should not accept a wage or earn anything except that which is good. 
they should only accept wages that are halal meanings meaning that they were attained by halal means they were attained by halal means that the commodity itself for lack of a better term let's give this example that the commodity itself was halal and the manner in which it was acquired was halal the transaction itself was halal naam and that in which the transaction revolved around was halal naam anything less is unacceptable wa la yunfiqu illa min at-tayyib and a person should not spend except that they are spending from money that was attained in the proper way they were they are spending from money that is halal naam so if a person makes money off of something that is haram then this will not be accepted from them because it is not from that which is good the shaykh he says wa qawluhu inna allah amara al mu'minin bima amara bihi al mursalin and allah and this and his statement sallallahu alayhi wasallam that verily allah commanded the believers with the same command that he commanded the messengers faqal and thus he said ya ayyuhar rusul o messengers kulu min tayyibat wa amalu salihah do righteous good uh, excuse me eat from that which is good and act and do and perform righteous good deeds wa qala ta'ala and allah ta'ala he says ya ayyuhal ladina amanu kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnakum o you who believe eat from the good that you have been provided with but fil ayatain and inside of both of these verses amara al mursalin wal mu'minin wal wal na'am amara al mursalin wal mursala ilayhim bi akli min al tayyib min al tayyibat allah ta'ala commanded the messengers and those whom they were sent to to eat from the good to eat from that which is good naam and what illah alhamd that which is good is plentiful inside of the land that which is good it is plentiful inside of the land what illah alhamd naam bay wa kama anna almursalin la ya'kuluna illa at-tayyib and just like the messengers they only eat from that which is good fa inna ala atba'ihim and la yakulu illa tayyiba then thus it is also upon those who truly follow them those who are truly upon the way of the prophets and the messengers that they too only eat from that which is good just like the prophets and the messengers they only ate from that which was good that which is halal that which is good so on and so forth then likewise those who truly follow them those who are truly upon their way then they too have to eat from that which is good and thus eating from that which is good then it is a a a a concern wa qala imam ibn daqiq al aid rahimahullah ta'ala fi sharhihi li hadha al hadith in his explanation for this particular hadith he mentions he says wa hadha al hadith ahad al hadith allati alayha qawaid al islam wa mabani al ahkam he said that this hadith is one of those a hadith is one of those a hadith on which the prince it is a principle it is a principle for the deen of al-islam and it is that in which is a foundation is a foundation for the rules and regulations now that this hadith is tremendous because this hadith entails a principle from the deen and a foundation from the from the fundamental principles of the religion naam and when we say the fundamental principles of the religion then this is the fundamental principles of what of the sunnah because the sunnah is built upon qawaid it is built upon usul it is built upon uh rules and regulations is built upon fundamental principles naam and it is incumbent that we are acquainted with the likes of these fundamental principles because when one says that they are upon the sunnah this is something that translates into all of their life it is not something that is restricted to one area 
to the exclusion of another area. But rather, this is in all of their life. That when we say that yani, that we are Sunni, Salafi, Athari, min ahlil, uh, 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 Ahlil Sunniti, Wal Jama'a, so on and so forth, then this enters into every aspect of our life. It is not in this affair and not in that affair, but it enters into every aspect of our lives. So you find and listen, how can this not be the case except, yani, how can this not be the case when Allah Ta'ala, He says, That on this day I have yani, perfected for your religion, completed my favor upon you, and I am pleased that you have Islam as your religion. But, Al-Islam, who is Sunnah? Was Sunnah heal Islam? Islam is the Sunnah, and the Sunnah is Islam. And one of them, Naam is not established except with the other, like Imam Ibn Rahari he mentions in the opening of Sharh Sunnah. Naam. So it is incumbent that we understand the likes of this, that being upon the Sunnah, then this enters into every aspect of an individual's life, huh? Every aspect of an individual's life, down to what they eat, so on and so forth. So thus you find that this hadith it is a principle from the principles of the deen, that it is a fundamental foundation, naam, from the principles of the deen and from the rules and regulations. وَفِيهِ الْحَثِ عَلَىٰ إِنْفَاقُ مِنْ حَلَالٍ And in it, it is, there is uh, an encouragement to spend from that which is halal. Also, what you understand from this is what? Is there is an, a recommendation and an encouragement to earn from the halal. Because in order to spend from the halal, you have to earn from the halal. Naam? So that means the individual's job has to be a job that is Halal can't be a job that's haram, can't be a job where they're yani engage in the buying and selling of haram commodities, can't be a job that with them within itself is a job that helps in, in sin and transgression. It can't be a job that is 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 is, is there to perpetuate that which, which which is false, falsehood and that which is haram. No, it has to be a job that is halal with them within itself. There has to be a job wherein a person Buying and selling, doing trade and transactions, so on and so forth, in that which is halal. And this is the only thing that is acceptable. Naam. And alhamdulillah, just like when one looks at those things that are haram upon the earth, and then they look at those things that are halal upon the earth, when they compare the two lists, they realize that those things that are halal, they outnumber those things that are haram. Likewise, the earning of wages and so on and so forth, there are more that are halal than there are that are haram. So, there is no need for a Muslim to engage themselves in earning and thus spending from that which is haram. And also, Imam Ibn Qiqi he mentions, he says, when nahi an al infaq min and a prohibition from spending, yani from other than the uh, halal. Naam, wa anna al ma'kul, wa mashroob, wa manbus, wa nahwaha, and that verily, the, uh, yani wa nahwaha, and that verily, the food, the drink, and the clothes, naam, and the likes of that, then yanbaghi an yakuna halalan, then it has to be halal khalisan, yani la shabiha fi. It has to be purely halal without any ambiguities therein. وَأَنَّ مَنْ أَرَادَ الدُّعَاءِ And that verily the one who wants their supplications, their dua, the one who is concerned about their dua being accepted, the one who is concerned about their supplications, their beseechments of Allah Ta'ala being accepted, أَوْلَى بِعْتِنَا بِذَلِكَ مِغَيْرِ Then they have yeah, it's more of a pressing priority for them to have an extreme concern for this more so than other than it. Naam, or other than them and the like. Naam, so if you want your dua to be accepted, then you have to make sure that your money that you earn is halal and that you spend upon the halal, your food is halal, your clothes is halal, your dress is halal, you are being nourished by the halal. That is, if, you, if you're concerned for your dua to be accepted, this has to be a priority for you. And anything shy of that is unacceptable. وَقَوْلُهُ And his statement, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ثُمَّ ذَكْرَ الرَّجُلُ يَطِيلُ السَّفَرُ أَشْعَثَ أَغْبَرَ And then 
the Prophet ﷺ, because see, the Prophet ﷺ, he brought an example. Naam. He laid down the principle, Inna Allah tayyib, na yaqbalu illa tayyiba, the verily Allah is good, he only accepts the good. And then he brings an example. Then he brings a tangible example so that we can understand and better understand and draw nearer to the listener, to the, yani, uh, the understanding of this principle and how it is applied and its effects upon our day-to-day -day lives. Naam. So then the Prophet I said, he mentioned a man who was on an extremely long journey and to, so, so much so that they became disheveled, they became covered with dust, or well, he became covered with dust. He found himself in a bad situation. He raised his hands into the, the, the sky and he said, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, Oh my Lord, Oh my Lord. However, his food was haram, mut'amuhu haram, wa mashrabuhu haram, wa malbasahu haram, muhudhiya bil haram. But his food was haram, his drink was haram, his clothes was haram, and he was nourished by the haram. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, فَأَنَّا لَهُ How can he be answered? How can such a person be answered? وَلَمَّا بَيِّنَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَنَّ اللَّهُ لَا يَقْبَلُ إِلَّا الطَّيِّبَ And when, once the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he explained that Allah only accepts that which is good. وَأَنَّ الْمُرْسَلِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ أُمِرُوا بِالْأَكْلِ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ And that the, both the messengers and the believers have been commanded to eat from that which is good, that which is halal, that which is good, wholesome. He explained that verily there are from human beings men maslak. Then they are from the human beings those who contradict this way. So his food is not good. But rather, they depend upon haram earnings. Haram earnings. Naam. Wasti'amalihi fi jami'i shu'uni. So much so that it is utilized in all of their affairs. It is utilized in all of their affairs. Min ma'kulin, from what they eat. Wal malbasin, what they wear. Wal ghidha'in, what they are nourished by, their nourishment. وَأَنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَسْبَابِ عَلَمِ الْقُبُولِ دُعَائِهِ And that verily this is from the reasons to have one's dua rejected. This is from the reasons that I have one's dua rejected. So if a person is making dua and you see that your dua is not being answered, check yourself. رَجْعِ نَفْسِكْ Check yourself. Because it is possible what? That you are falling into that which is haram. Your earnings are from the haram, naam, like those who earn from, from riba, those who earn from interest, and they indulge in interest, they buy and trade and sell and, 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 and use interest, or agree to contracts, interest-bearing contracts, and so on and so forth. This could be a cause to put you in a bad situation, so much so that your supplications will not be answered. Naam. Whoever is eating from the haram, Put yourself in a situation that your dua will not be answered. Those who are wearing the haram, put yourself in a situation where your dua will not be answered. Naam? So for those who partake in interest-bearing transactions, they put themselves and subject themselves to having their supplication rejected. Likewise, those who do not dress properly, naam? be they male or female, those who do not cover, those who do not dressed properly when outside and leaving the house so on and so forth then they are dressed in a manner that is haram or they are dressed with that which is haram for them like men wearing gold or men wearing silk so on and so forth now this is haram for the man so for the man to adorn himself in gold or to adorn himself in silk this is very dangerous because now he subjects himself to potentially having his dua rejected now so on and so forth. Like, so this is from the causes by way in which a person do I will not be accepted. Now I want you to look back to this example. This example is very important. It's very specific. The Prophet said he did not speak on his own authority, but rather, yeah, he, well, he spoke from revelation. 
Listen to the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said the man was on a journey, an extremely long journey, right? He raised his hands. Like, he called out to Allah Ta'ala, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb. He called out, Barrububiyya. Naam, Barrububiyya of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Like, however, his food was haram, drink haram, clothes haram, nourished by the haram. Understand this. The Shaykh, he mentions, because... His food, drink, clothes, and nourishment was from the haram. His dua is rejected. Even though he is in a situation where he has multiple reasons by way in which the dua is ordinarily accepted. The Shaykh mentioned, he says, And this is with the fact that even though he is coming with reasons and causes by way in which ordinarily will have your dua accepted. For example, he's upon a journey. The Prophet ﷺ, he said in a hadith rawahu wa tirmadhi min hadith Abi Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, al dua al musafir, and the Prophet ﷺ, he said, thalatha da'wat mustajabat. لا شك فيهن that there are three supplications that are answered and there is no doubt as relates to it. Three supplications that are answered and there is no doubt as relates to it. And then the Prophet ﷺ he mentioned دعوة المظلوم the da'wa of the one who is oppressed. Now, if you oppress somebody because you take their rights, you oppress them, right, in any which way, shape, or form. Be warned. Be warned. You should be scared. Why? Because if you oppress somebody, if that person who was oppressed makes dua against you, the Prophet Sallallahu said that the dua is accepted. Now, in another narration, there is no screen between that, that person's dua and, 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 uh, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So if you oppress someone and they make dua against you, their dua is accepted. So this is a perfect way to get yourself destroyed. Oppress people and then see what happens when they start making dua against you. Naam. Ala kulli hal. The Prophet Sallallahu he said what? He said, la shak fi hin. There's no doubt that the, that the dua of these individuals will be accepted. So from them is who? The person who is oppressed. Like, wa da'wat al musafir. And the dua of the traveler. The dua of the traveler. Look, the person here, yadilu safar. He is on a long journey. He's traveling. So ordinarily, because he's traveling, this is a cause from the causes by way in which the dua will be accepted. But his is not accepted. Even though he has reasons and causes by way in which to be accepted, that of the preventative factors, being that his food is haram, his drink is haram to the end of it, will prevent it from being accepted, even for a person who's in a situation where ordinarily it will be accepted, which shows you how strong of, of, of preventative factors these things are and how dangerous they are and why they are totally not acceptable and also the dua that is answered uh, is the dua of the parent for the child the dua of the parent for the child is accepted so you know children have to be careful disrespect your parents anger one's parents so on and so forth. If that parent loses it, right, and makes dua against you, Allah, Allah, it's very bad. That's a good way to get yourself destroyed. Now, so the level and respect of the parents is tremendous. And likewise with parents, and this is why parents should be wise and do not make dua against your children. Make dua for your children. Now, do not make dua against them. Make dua for them. Because the reality is that we want for them the good. We want for them to be rectified. We want for them to be upon that which is good. So therefore, it behooves us to make dua not against, but rather for them. So for the parents, be mindful to make dua for your children. When you see from them that which you do not like, then ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them. Ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes them from those who, who does what he loves and that which he's pleased with. Make dua for them. Naam. Wait. Also, and as mentioned, Hadith Rawahu Turmadi. Also, from the fact that we know that the dua, as Imam Rajabi mentions, he says, Was Safar 
بمجرده بمجرده نعم يقتضي إجابة الدعاء and that the traveling with him by itself then this is a reason a cause for a person's dua to be accepted so that any anything that enters into and is categorized as a travel a person traveling then their dua is eligible to be accepted now this is an individual who safar, he's on a very long journey so there's no there's no doubt except that he is on a travel but with that his dua is still not accepted also from the causes and the and, and, and the means by way in which the dua is accepted is by raising the hands when making dua, raising the hands at the time in which it comes inside of the sharia to raise the hands to make dua. Naam. So if a person is going to make dua, then the typically generally the default is that they raise their hands, right? Except, except during those times where the Prophet Sallam made dua and he did not raise his hands. For example, at the salah from the afkar at the salah it is not from the sunnah that one raises their hands now no no this, this there were other times for example if a person is um a person is praying salat istikhara for example salat istikhara for this, they, they can raise their hands. Now, a person is making dua between the adhan and iqama. Person, they raise their hands. Now, person is making dua when it's raining. Now, they raise their hands. So the so the default when making dua is to raise your hands. Now, it is only in those instances where the Prophet did not raise his hands, but it's affirmed that he made dua in those times. We don't raise our hands, right? So at the salat, for example, we don't raise our hands because it's not authentically reported in the Prophet that he made. That he raises his hands at this time. Naam. Um, and making the afkar, yani after the uh, salah. But, um, but for example, as I mentioned, if a person is uh, making istikhara, then then at this time he's making istikhara, he tests me, and he raises his hands, and he makes the, the dua for those who say to make it at, at that time. Um, and this is according to the hadith of the Prophet as it comes on the authority, min hadith, salman, al farisi. رضي الله تعالى عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أن الله حي كريم يستحي إذا يستحي إذا رفع رجل إليه يديه أن يردهما صفرا خائبتين رواه الترمذي that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that verily Allah is the ever living the most um, generous and he is shy that a man will raise his hands unto him, meaning in dua, that he will allow them to return, that the man put his hands down with zero and nothing. So this is from the reasons and the causes for the dua to be accepted. Naam. However, because this person brought the preventative factors from his food being haram and drink haram and so on and so forth, even with him having, being on a journey and raising his hands, it's not accepted. Also, from the ways in which that the dua is accepted is to qarar a dua is to repeat the dua. To repeat the dua is from the ways and the means and the causes by way in which the dua is accepted. So when we make dua, we should make dua abundantly, and we should re, uh, we should repeat the uh, dua as it comes in the, in, in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he said. ثلاثة لا يرد الله دعاءهم that there are three who Allah does not reject their dua meaning each time the Prophet the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he mentioned there are three there are three he mentioned from those who their dua is accepted now not all of them but from those who their dua is accepted so this time he's mentioning three now he's mentioning this time again three one is repeated. As it came in the other hadith, and two are new. Two are new, so we can add them to our list. The Prophet, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, الذاكر, um, الذاكر One who remembers Allah much. So remembering Allah much, repeating of the dua, then this is from the means by way in which the dua is accepted. Then the second one was mentioned was one we already took. مظلوم, and the supplication of the one who was oppressed which is scarce again because 
that one made it to both lists. The one who was oppressed, his dua is accepted. Naam. Well, Imam al muqsit and for the Imam who is righteous, the man who the Imam who is just from the just ruler, the just leader, their dua is accepted. Hadith Sahih. I mean Hadith Hassan. Hassanahu al Albani. His hadith is Hassan. Uh, Imam al Albani, he graded it as being Hassan. So thus, the reasons this man is traveling a long travel, such as that he they become disheveled, filled with dust. Right? This is one reason that his dua ordinarily would have been accepted. Raise his hands when he made the dua. This is ordinarily from the reason that a man's dua will be accepted. Wakonduhu Yunadi uh Yunadi Allah the Rububiya tihi and that he called out Allah by his Rububiya. These are from the ways in which an individuals their dua will be accepted. Ma'a il hahihi ala rabbihi bitikrari dhalik and he was in a state of distress. And what points and highlights that that he was in a state of distress is that he repeated it. Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb. Naam. So this highlights the fact that he was in a state of distress. Ordinarily, such a situation is a situation that the believer will find his dua accepted. But this individual, his dua was not accepted. Why? Because his food was haram, his drink was haram, his clothes were haram, he was um, nourished by the haram. So therefore his dua is rejected. Naam. And thus the statement of the Prophet ﷺ, and how will he how is he going to be answered? Naam. And then it comes another narration, for Enna Yustajabuli Dalik. There comes another narration, and how could that be answered? Naam. How could he be answered? And then it comes a narration, how can that even be answered? How can his supplication be answered? When this is his situation that all the, the I mean, these things that were mentioned uh, they're all haram. Naam. The Shaykh he says, hey. استبعاد حصول الإجابة لوجود الأسباب المانعة من القول من القبول الدعاء. He said, how could he possibly be answered? Meaning that it is very far fetched that he's going to receive an answer while you have these preventative factors from his dua being accepted. You have these preventative factors. So how is he his dua going to be answered? How could he expect and anticipate an answer when his whole situation is haram? Naam? His whole situation is haram. How is he going to be answered? So this shows us and it stresses to us that things are not isolated, right? Things are not isolated by themselves, but if an individual is seeking to better themselves, if an individual is seeking to become righteous, to become religious, then the thing, then it, yani, the ibadat, our deen is all interconnected. It's not isolated by itself, where a person can yani, pick and choose, well, I'm going to do this, and these other things I'm not going to worry about. Because the reality of it is, is that every, every good deed has a beneficial effect upon the believer, upon the individual. Right? Every good deed has a beneficial effect upon the individual. Likewise, every evil deed, every sin has an adverse effect upon the person. It has consequences. Ma'am, actions have consequences. Those consequences are going to either be good or they're going to be bad. They're either going to be good or they're going to be bad. So if there's anything inside of a person's life that they feel has been derailed, then it is incumbent that they go back and they investigate themselves. Now, see, a lot of times, a lot of individuals, this is from the trick, one, of, one of the tricks of Sheikh Bond, is that he gets you to look outside of yourself. Something is not happening right, it's always someone else's fault. Right? Those individuals who it's always someone else's fault, even in the terms of dunya, are never that successful. They always have an excuse. Why didn't you get this? Oh, because they held me back. Why didn't you this? Oh, because they was hating on me. Why didn't you this? Oh, because so on and so forth, they undermined me. It's always someone else's fault, right? Now, as so much as 
And there are certain situations where you have people who are not rooting for you. There are certain situations where you have people who are against you. Certain situations where you have naysayers. There is no one who is successful except that they have naysayers. There is no one who is successful except that they have people who are rooting and plotting against them. So the fact that people rooted against you and plotted against you and they were naysayers and so on and so forth is really irrelevant because there's no one except that they have that. There's no one except that they have that. Allah tells us, tells us, tells us this about the prophets and the messengers. There was never a prophet or a messenger except that he had an enemy. Okay, so we think we're going to be enemy free. We think we're going to be of those who don't hate us. There was those who hated the prophets and the messengers. But they were still from the most successful of Allah's creatures. Now. So the mere fact that there are those who are out to get you is irrelevant because at the end of the day, Shaytan is out to get you. He's our enemy. He's our enemy. He's out to get you. He's always against you. He always wants to see you destroyed. He's always, he never has your best interest in mind. So are we going to utilize the fact that we have those who are against us as a reason and excuse by way in which we don't achieve excellence? It makes no sense. Ma'am. So even in the standpoint of the dunya, this is irrelevant. You're always going to have individuals who are against you. But the reality of it is, is that despite all of that, don't look outside of yourself. But start with yourself. If things didn't go right, start with yourself. What did I do that wasn't correct? What did I do that wasn't right? Now, as, 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 as Imam al-Shafi'i, he mentioned the, the, the famous line of poetry where he said... Um, يعني شكرت إن 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 الوكيع بسوء الحفظ نعم he said I complained to the wakiع who was his his sheikh about my bad memory نعم I complained to him about my bad memory يعني to the end of the to the end of the poem where 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 he mentioned وأن وأن هذا النور وأن الله لا يعطي نور لا لا يعطي نوره إلى العاصي that really this knowledge is is uh, is light and Allah does not give His light to the sinner, نعم and the reason Imam al-Shafi'i he uh, he had this because one day Imam al-Shafi'i had a a photographic memory so much so that he would have to cover one one side of the the book one page he would have to cover it because if not he would confuse the two pages if he looked at them simultaneously. Now, so we have to cover one side and just concentrate on just the one page, and then and then he'll look at the other side, right? Like, so what happened was, and he was able to do that pretty much in one one look, one go at it, and he'll memorize it. Well, on this day, it took him three times, right? So he went to Wakir. That's what he's saying on the post. He comes to Wakir and so in heavy, now. Uh, I went and complained to Wakir about my bad memory. But, uh, so he told me and he guided me to leave off sins. To leave off sins. Because, because Wakir, he said to him, he said, you must have done something. If your memory has been adversely affected, you must have done something. You must have done a sin. Review yourself. Check yourself. What did you do? He didn't blame the other people. Oh, maybe somebody made the eye against you. That's how people are, right? It's the ain. I couldn't get it. It's, it's the ain. Somebody put ain on me. Everything ain. Somebody sick a gin on me. Something, right? Everything is always somebody else's fault. To so the fact it's the ain, it's the gin, it's that. Huh? That's how it is. I mean, subhanAllah. And, and, and it's sad, but it's like that. It's always always something else. Always, it's never me. No, not me. It must be somebody to put ain. Somebody jealous. Yeah? So he said, no, no. He said, look, review, check yourself. What happened? So Imam Shafi'i, he, he thought about it, thought about it, thought about it. He said, subhanAllah, I was at the market today. And you know how it is in the market. People are carrying things, lifting things up, and so on and so forth. He said, and the, the shin of a woman became uncovered. Perhaps she was lifting her hand up to put something on her, her shoulder, her head. You know, to carry it, right? Her shin became uncovered. Remember Shafi'i he said, and I saw it. I saw it. Now I want you to be very yeah. He said he saw it. He didn't say to He didn't say I looked at it. He said I saw it. He said I saw it. Right? <laughs> that makes Walmart real scary right now, right? <laughs> Allah was tired, because I mean, you know, Allah was tired. Right? He said, he said, I saw it. He said, that's what it is. That's it. That's the culprit right there. I saw that lady shin. 
mess my memory up. You see? So, in life, when things don't go right, we have to go back to ourselves and see, okay, what did I do? What is going, what, what was going on today? Right? And ponder and look and then make the corrections. Just like if we go into a business venture, right, from a dunya standpoint, to give an example. If we go into a business venture and it just, our proposal was rejected. What's the first thing you start looking back to? Your proposal. Well, what in the proposal is the reason by which it was rejected? Was it the verbiage of the proposal? I didn't, I didn't bring the, the proper verbiage. Were there certain points that they were looking for that I missed? What, is, what in this proposal rendered it not to be accepted? And thus, at times you will ask, well, what was it about the proposal that, you know, led you to reject it? And then we, and we take that feedback so that we, so that what? So that next time we could address whatever concerns those were. So to add what we need to add, or if there was something that was there that didn't need to be there, then we take that out, we adjust. So likewise, more importantly, when it comes to these affairs, we have to look back to our demon. What is it? Is it, you know, am I, am I, is I, my lack of concentration when I pray? Is it sins I was committing? What happened? Why are things going crazy right now? Because nine times out of ten is your fault. Nine times out of ten is your fault. Now, um, so as 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 usual, uh, the alama, the Sheikh Abdul Muhsin, Al Abad Al Badr, he extracts benefit from the hadith, right? And this and this is and this is a good exercise for the students of knowledge. That as you come to narrations, try to extract the fawaid, the 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 benefits from that particular narration. So that, you, so that you're engaged in it. It's not just something you just read and you, it passes you by, but that you reflect on it and say, well, what are some of the benefits I learned from this hadith? And Imam al-Shafi, there's another beautiful story of Imam al-Shafi when he um, spent the night with Imam Ahmed. So Imam Ahmed, he brought a bowl of, yani, uh, of, uh, of uh, water. So Imam al-Shafi could make wudu throughout the course of the night and, and pray yani, something from Qiyam Mulay. So... Imam Ahmed's daughter, because, uh, you know, she's always hearing about, you know, the great Imam Shafi'i. So she decided, okay, I want to pay attention, you know, just so I can understand why my father holds him in such high regard. So she had taken notice in the morning time that the water wasn't touched and that Imam Shafi'i just left and went straight to the masjid to pray, to pray Fajr. There's no indoor plumbing. So in order for him to make wudu, he has to use the water that they gave him. So when she mentioned this, you know, you're saying he's like this, but he didn't even touch his water. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't pray last night, and then he went to the masjid without um, making wudu. So Imam Ahmed said, I'll ask. I'll ask. Now, which is a tremendous benefit within, within itself. You just don't take stuff, but you get to the bottom, you ask, what happened? Why? You know, and this was the way the Prophet said And, um, I just mentioned one thing is because off track, but this is yeah, um, when when that Sahabi sent the letter, secret letter back yeah, to the Quraysh, telling the, the plans of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Prophet had Ali Rabbi Allah Ta'ala who intercept the letter, and he brought it back. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, once you, I mean, the Prophet Sallallahu already knew he sent the letter because Allah Ta'ala revealed to him that the letter was sent and who it was sent with. Ali Kulli Hal, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't just come down on the man. He didn't he didn't just take him and you know. Uh, 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 punish him or come down on him or you know so on and so forth but what did he do he asked him what has caused you to do this why did you do this he gave him a chance to explain himself explain yourself why did you do this so then the man explained I have no I have no people in Mecca you know looking after my interests looking after you know uh, that which is important to me there and so on and so forth and this was the only way like I was under threat under you know being extorted this was the only way you know, for me to keep what, what, what is mine there safe. This was the only means. I didn't want to do it. I was forced, right, due to this situation. And, uh, and then it's, it's well known. The Prophet ﷺ, he commanded that they leave him alone. He said, leave him alone. He's from the people of Badr. And what will make you understand about the rank of the people of Badr? Leave him. That's it. Right? So, Imam so Ahmadi asked him, what happened? So, Imam al-Shafi, he said, I didn't, I didn't go to sleep all night. He said, I had my wudu from Aisha. I didn't go to sleep all night. 
So therefore, when it came time for Fajr, I was able to go and, and pray Fajr. I didn't go to sleep. He said, but rather I stood up all night extracting all of these benefits from these particular ahadith. So this was, yani, this is the way of the ulama. They extract benefits and uh, this is a, a, a very good exercise so that we can engage with the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ by reflecting over it, pondering over it, writing down what are the benefits, what are the points that I, I learned from this particular hadith. So, uh, Shaykh Abdul Muhsin, at the end of every hadith, he does that. He extracts benefits. Damn. So, the first he brings here nine benefits, and we'll mention them quickly. The first one he said is that one we learned from, from this hadith, anna min asma'illah at-tayyib, that from Allah's name is uh, the good. Wa alaykum as That from Allah's names is the good. And the meaning of it is that Allah is free and removed from any um, deficiencies and shortcomings. And verily from his attributes, الطيب is الطيب. Uh, and from his attributes is that يعني, he is good and wholesome. لِأَنَّ الْأَسْمَاءِ لِأَنَّ الْأَسْمَاءِ لَا كُلَّهَا مُشْتَقْ مُشْتَقَ uh, Because all of Allah's names and attributes, they are extracted, all of Allah's names, excuse me, are extracted from the attributes. All of Allah's names are extracted from the attributes. So Allah Ta'ala is attributed with Rahma. He's attributed with Rahma. So therefore the name that comes from that is Rahman. Naam, Rahman, and so on and so forth. What did you do? Sifat, and a mushtaqa minha, and the name points to the description or the characteristic in which it was extracted from, like in the case of Ar Rahman. Allah Ta'ala is described as having mercy and being merciful, so therefore his name is the most merciful. Naam, Ar Rahman. The second point of benefit that we learn from this hadith is that verily, the, the Muslim who comes with good, that the Muslim, it is incumbent upon him, المسلم, it is incumbent upon the Muslim that he has to come with that which is good, both in actions and in earnings. That his actions have to be good and his earnings must be good, meaning from halal. من مال حلال and at verily صدقه is not accepted does not count except that which comes from money that is halal so a person gives صدقه from money that is haram he don't get no credit for it نعم a drug dealer come he want to give uh, 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 صدقه from his drug dealing money he don't get no credit for that it don't count for him نعم a bank robber come he want to give صدقه from what he robbed that's nice, some robber hood type of stuff. You know, it doesn't count. You rob it from people, then you want to give that away in charity. Charity is not accepted. It's not accepted. Why? Because the manner in which it was gathered is not good. The manner in which it was gathered is not good. So it's not accepted. Naam. And we get that from where? From this hadith. That Allah is good. He only accepts good. So we understand what? Is that if it's not good, it's not accepted. If good is the only thing that's accepted, that which is not good, then therefore it's not accepted. Naam. The principle is clear in this hadith. But it comes another hadith that the Shaykh mentions that is collected by Muslim with the Prophet. He said, That Allah does not accept a prayer without ablution. And he does not accept the charity from money that was uh, earned. Through impermissible means. This is what meant by ghulul. So if a person extorted somebody, if they embezzled, if they robbed, if they stole, if they, yani, to the end of it, right? Then any sadaqah from that money will not be accepted. Any sadaqah from that money will not be accepted. This hadith has been collected by Muslim. Now, also, fourthly, is that uh, Allah Ta'ala has been very bountiful and treated his slaves in a in yani bestowed bounty upon his slaves with many good and wholesome and, and wonderful things and thus he ordered them to eat from it that Allah Ta'ala out of his bounty he has provided us with many good things now 
fruits, vegetables, any water, you know, juices, so on and so forth, from the things that are halal. Nah? Um, so much abundance, so much abundance, so many food, so many vegetables, so many water, so much grain, so much juices, so much, so much, so much, so much good stuff. Good stuff, that's halal. Nah? And thus, he commands us to eat from that, which within, within itself is, is, is merciful. Nah? Allah gives it to us. And then tells us to eat from it. Mimma razaqanakum from that which you have been provided. Fifthly, wa in the ekli haram, eating that which is haram is from the reasons by way in which we'll have your dua rejected. Naam. Fifth is that eating haram, eating things that is haram, then this is from the means by way in which it will get your dua rejected. Sixth, wa in the min asbab al qabul, and that barely that which is from the reasons for the acceptance of the dua. Is that a person is upon a journey, Naam, that a person is upon a journey, uh, be that journey short or long, but a person is upon a journey, it was a long journey to the point where they yeah, and he, uh, become disheveled and they become filled with dust. Seventh, that rarely from the causes and the means by way in which the dua is accepted is that a person raises their hands when they make dua again. They raise their hands when they make du'a during those times where it was legislated. The Prophet ﷺ he raised his hands when he made du'a. But those narrations that come with that describe the Prophet ﷺ being in a situation where he's making du'a but he did not raise his hands when making du'a, then it is not from the sunnah to raise our hands during those times. Also, that from the means and ways in which the du'a is accepted is by making tawassul to Allah by his names and his attributes. Now, from the ways that the dua is accepted is by making tawassul to Allah by by way of his names. Now, by way of his names. Bi asma'i. Uh, for example, that a person will say, Ya Rahman, Rahimni. Now, O oh Allah, O oh, 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 most merciful, excuse me, have mercy upon me. Now, uh, to the end. Right? That makes sense? Right? For you. Ya ni, for example. Oh, all forgiving, forgive me. So to call upon Allah by his names and in, in, in cases that are appropriate, then this is from the ways in which a person will have his dua uh, accepted. Uh, and then lastly, that verily from the causes and means by way in which the dua is accepted is that a person strives hard and they have yani make ijtihad yani uh, what do you say yani ijtihad yani they, they, they strive hard and earnestly and calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so do not uh, waver do not lose hope call upon Allah call upon Allah call upon Allah ask Allah ask Allah ask Allah because those who make dua to Allah much, then these are those who their dua is accepted. And then the Shaykh Ta'ala, he goes on to get into the next hadith, which is the 11th hadith. Walakin, naktafi bihad al qadr. ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa jazakumullahu khayra.